Hello Aqua friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we're going to do a watercolor galaxy. And I'm going to show you the adventures that I went on on how I perfected this galaxy with some really cool techniques. So let's get started. So I want to talk to you guys about this little experiment that I did trying to do a galaxy. So I've been practicing around and I want to show you the difference between the two. So this was my first go. And as you can see, the, the light colors that I used, they're not very vibrant. They don't really uh, attract the eye as much as this one does. Doing this made me think about a different type of watercolor that is really vibrant that I could use. So this was done with regular watercolors, okay, like so. And I chose uh, the pinks and the purple and blue colors that are side by side on the color wheel, basically. And just a few colors. You don't want to use too many colors and it gets complicated and just might not look right. So then I switched to a palette that is got the greens and the blues and the turquoises because like that's my favorite color. So that's what I wanted to use. And I added some new techniques and I love the outcome. Can anybody guess what I used for these extremely vibrant colors? Okay. Da, da, da. I used these liquid watercolors, uh, Echo Line, and they were very reasonable in price. And so I got um, two of these. One is um, like some neutral colors, blacks and grays, browns. And then pr pretty much I have some primaries here. So for this, I used the green, the yellow, and the blue okay and i started off just kind of playing around with getting a vibrant background because i knew that this there just wasn't enough contrast in this one i really like the way this came out so along with the nice vibrant background when i started adding in my darker colors i did use the perusian blue mixed with some indigo blue to get a really nice dark color and then notice these very faint splotches. That is controlled blooms that I did by flicking water onto the watercolor. And so then you get a lot more of a depth in this galaxy, I think. And I further lifted out some spots that I wanted to highlight. And I also splattered the blue along with the white. So I have little different speckles of color in here. And for the bigger stars, I just used the end of a brush in order to uh, get these bigger dots. So let's get right into it and I'll show you how I went from this to this. Okay, so in my experimentation, I decided to wet my paper first. So I'm wetting it really well just with a flat brush. So I planned on pouring the colors onto my paper and then moving the paper around so that they kind of mingle together. Well, this just produced one solid color, but that's okay because I'm using the three colors. I do want that nice cohesive aqua color to stain my paper, to stain the whole background so I have something to work with here. But when you come back in and you start to drop in, and I'm just using a little uh, pipette that you could buy. They're, they're really cheap. I just got mine on Amazon. But I'm just dropping in the, that very vibrant yellow. And then slowly kind of like moving around on my paper just to see what it does. And let your paper dry a little bit and then just continue dropping in those colors individually and kind of see what you get so there's no rhyme or reason i'm trying to go in a spirally um, fashion or lots of curves trying to mimic a, a galaxy and my paper is saturated <laughs> as you can see i'm making a big mess it's just very, very full of water. And I don't like what's happening here. So 
it's so wet that it's pooling into these rivets and I don't want that. So I'm taking my paper towel and I'm just soaking up all of that extra moisture. Okay, so I'm making sure I don't have any pools of paint anywhere. Okay, so I'm going to wipe all that off of there. Now it is still wet, so I'm going to add in my darker blues that I told you about. So this is the Perusian blue with the indigo. And I'm finding that when I put this, these darker colors on the perimeter almost gives it that vignette appearance. I kind of really liked that. And of course, adding these dark colors right next to the yellowy green bright spots really make the galaxy come alive. So I just started this off as an experimentation and then I just loved the results and I thought, well, I'm just going to share with you my adventures in watercolor and you can see how I play around with things. I did one thing. I didn't like how it worked out. So your watercolor is always a problem solving media and it's so much fun because you get to think in layers and you think, okay, well, I didn't like that color. So what can I use now? You know? So here I'm sprinkling the blues. I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of sparkles of the blue as well because, you know, interstellar dust is not just the white. And here I am sprinkling the water onto the paper. Everything is still wet, so notice all these beautiful blooms that it's making. So now I'm going to let that whole thing dry. And this is where I decided to lift up some areas that are naturally in the areas where the blooms happened. And I'm using a magic eraser with some tweezers, just a little piece of a magic eraser to further lift that paint. So it does look like little sparkling areas, little sparkling stars. And, <laughs> and now I'm gonna sprinkle the white on and I don't wanna overdo it. So I just do a little couple sprinkles and then for some darker, larger star areas, uh, you could take the back of your brush, like I was saying, or I have a little dotting tool that, that I used to uh, make some highlighted white dots. So guys, that's really how simple this project is. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below if you're going to give it a try. Let me know if you have liquid watercolors. And if you don't, my friends, go ahead and use a very bright staining color for your background color and I'm sure it'll turn out just as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week.